Here we are. It is Sunday. Uh, let's see, October 8th, 2023. And I normally don't do videos, as you know, on Sundays, because I like to take my weekends off. But I had this this auction has been on my mind, and I wanted to get to it and talk about it a little bit, because there's a, a, it's a nifty sale coming up in 10 days in, on the 18th at Freeman's over in Philadelphia. Uh, it's a good auction house, oldest auction house in America, actually. And uh, it's, it's tied in with uh, Lion and Turnbull, and, and that's another very fine uh, European auction house, English auction house. But this sale's on October 18th at 10 a.m., um, and it's run by uh, uh, Freeman's, and, and Ben Farina is the uh, uh, in-house expert there. And he's put together a nice sale, and I want to go through some of the lots because it's it's not one of these big blockbuster, you know, with million-dollar items, but there's some very nice items in this sale. Um, it's it, 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 And some good small objects, some good lots. And if you're a collector and you're, you're like, like most of us, you sort of like, like to buy things that are curious and very interesting, this is a good sale to pay attention to, and you have plenty of time to get in information and uh, you know you know make, make arrangements to bid you can bid through their site directly um, you can register on live auctioneers and all that other good stuff so you know how to do it but I wanted to uh, sort of go through the uh, through the sale I'm going to use the, the live auctioneer site it's it's all these are on the global member pages they've been there for over a week uh, if you I know some of you have been uh, getting in touch with them but I want to talk about a few of the lots that are on here there's some pretty sweet lots on here and uh, this is a 24 inch tall Celadon ground for Mill Rose Vase. And I might have mentioned this in another video, just sort of running through on the weekly video, just as something I touched on. I thought this was an awfully nice vase. I love the handles on it. It looks like it's in good shape um, all the way around. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it. You want to get condition reports, but it's a good looking vase. It's very reasonably estimated at $1,500 to $2,000. It should easily get there. Easily get there. This is a nice piece of porcelain. The opening bid is just $750. This is a two foot tall vase. A beautiful example. And uh, if you didn't step up to bat for the $180,000 birdcage that sold at Christie's last week, well, you can buy this one. It's not by the same artist and it's not made of Zeton, but it's the same form. It's strikingly similar. Made in Southern China is where they made all the best bird 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 cages, and uh, this is probably a late Qing example to early uh, Republic period. Uh, it looks to be in great condition. It's all there, and uh, it looks like it could use a little oil. Maybe it looks a little dry, but other than that, it looks like a nice little bird bird cage. Uh, estimated at fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred. It's a very reasonable estimate. Don't be surprised if it brings uh, you know three or four thousand, uh, because it's a good example and it's intact. Often bird cages are all bashed up and they're, they're they're pretty horrific condition and then this if you like uh Kutani, they have this listed as harado and i i think i to me this looks more they're, they're, i think they were sort of wondering but they just said probably harado i can understand why uh for a number of reasons in particular the way the blue and white looks but it could also be easily could be Kutani. And uh, regardless, it is a terrific teapot. Very, very unusual. And has this reticulated base on it with these faces on it and these very nice, elegant handles and a, and a bird, bird beak spout. Uh, I like this a great deal. And I know a number of you out there are Katani buyers. I hear from you all the time. It's like a little club. Um, this is a, this looks like something worth going after. Even if it is, if it's Harado, it's also interesting to go after. It's a very, very nice teapot. Estimated at 1000 to 1500 $500 opening bid, and it's a rare type. So give that some serious thought. And then over here, uh, a, a group, uh, a lot of teapots. I like the one in particular on the right, this one, uh, with, with the Famille Rose uh, panels interspersed with Femme Noir and this blue enamel handle, which struck me as being quite unusual. And then you have this lovely uh, sort of lotus pattern radiating plate in the middle. And then one of these Yongchen relief work. These are those, those teapots that have the high relief work on them where everything comes off and it's reticulated. This is a nice lot. If you're a Famille Rose buyer and you like Young Chen to early Chin Lung. If this if, if this is if this is early Chin Lung, he means they're talking about 1740, very early in the period. Uh, the lot is the whole lot's estimated reasonably at 1500 to 2000, 750 dollar opening bid. I think the teapot on the right alone is worth the opening bid. Uh, so it's a very f a fairly priced uh, lot. Um, again, get a condition report and check it out. But uh, it's 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 a nice it's a nice grouping. 
And then this very, and if you're an Amer if you're a China trade buyer from the early uh, 19th, late late 18th, early 19th century, this is a very unusual teapot. It's done in the style that we often see on export pieces that came to America, China trade for the Americas, the pattern, the style of teapot, and so forth. But it's done in grisaille decoration. That's very unusual. You don't see these very often. Um, I, I know there's one, in, I believe, in the Peabody Essex Museum or a couple, but that's about it. I, you don't see these very often. Um, uh, and it's it, again one of these rare birds, and you know, and it's got these nice big strap handles. I don't know if it's if the handles have been repaired or anything, so you want to check on that. But it's got the berry finial with gilding on it. Nice looking pot. Uh, estimated at just five to seven hundred dollars with a two hundred and fifty dollar opening bid. Um, you know, leave a bid on this thing. Leave a bid of four or five hundred dollars on it. You might get it. Uh, it may go the distance though. It may go to the high estimate because it, it, it grisaille decorated uh, landscape teapots of this kind from that period are very unusual. You don't see them at all very uh, around the market. And those of you who have been collecting for a while, if you look, you think back, when, when was the last time you saw one? And then these. I think these are absolutely smashing. These are two of the nicest uh, first half of the 19th. They're made in the first half of the 19th century, these garden stools with these big open work uh, uh, panels on them and this profusion of Famille Rose figural landscape decoration on it. These are two of the nicest garden benches I've seen in a long, 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 long time. Um, uh, absolutely fascinating, beautifully done. Uh, I can't think of any reason, you, if, you, if you're a porcelain collector and you like early, early first half of the 19th century Qing work, boy, these two things are fantastic. They're estimated at three to 5,000, which is about what they typically estimate regular traditional Mandarin garden barrels. And these are by far superior, I think, by far superior. Uh, they measure uh, 17 inches tall, which is the right height. They came out of a house in Newport, Rhode Island, which doesn't surprise me at all. These are absolutely beautiful, and they could bring 10,000 thousand or even fifteen thousand. Uh, these are absolutely great. But if you've been looking for you only want to own one pair of garden seats in, in your collection, uh, you want to own these. These are it. These these are absolutely outstanding. Absolutely great. And I think the estimate's very, very, very reasonable. And then this, the Famille Rose Fisherman's plaque. Uh, this is a big plaque. I want to give you the size of this before I talk about it. It's uh, 18 inches in diameter. So it's not some small um uh uh you know, a little, you know, six inch plaque that came out of a screen. This is 18 inches. This is a beast of a plaque. And it is only estimated, it's estimated at three to 5,000, only as a $1,500 opening bid. Um, I'm not sure where they dated this, but this certainly looks to be either late 18th or first half of the 19th century, you know, or, or like Jai Jing period, something like that. I love the scene. And here they are fishing with the cormorants. You know how they, they put the rope around the cormorant's neck and he grabs the fish, but he can't swallow it. The fishermen reel the fish, reel the bird in and then take the take the fish out. And just so, some, so, some of you, in case you, you know about this practice, you, you also know that at the end of the day, if they, the birds do a good job, they get all the fish they want. They, 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 the tradition was they, they would feed them very, very well, a reward from, for bringing in a good day. And here you have an elder sitting out on, on a terrace and somebody walking down the steps to the water. So a really nice plaque, really, really attractive. And I don't think the estimate is, 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 is at all unreasonable at three to $5,000. Again, this is like the garden seats, something you don't see every day, like the grisaille things. These are the, this auction has a, has a real core of things, unusual things that you don't see all the time. And uh, th that was particularly nice. And then there's this, the big Kangxi Langyao copper red baluster vase, Kangxi period, 21 inches tall. And the estimate is only eight to twelve thousand dollars, and I'm not quite sure why that is, because this is a really nice looking vase. When I first looked at it, I thought maybe the top of it's been ground, uh, you know, it's missing a little. But right there, there's some shine, so I, I think the rim on this is perfectly fine. It's got that nice uh, green sort of celadon ground on the interior, and uh, again on the uh, base, which you often see in Kangxi pieces, uh, they look like like that. They they turn green and crackle, and but very nicely glazed. Look at that thick, 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 thick glaze how it accumulated around the around the, the uh, that outskirt on the foot it didn't drip down didn't make a mess they didn't have to grind it off um, I'm not sure why the estimates only eight to twelve thousand uh, maybe 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 the, there's the restoration or something I don't know but expect it to bring 20 to 30 would be a more realistic bid but 
It's only got a four thousand dollar opening bid, which basically means it's unreserved. There's really not even a you know if it's four thousand dollars, it's a gift. But it's a very very nice deck, and I like a neck base, and I like that long neck uh, that's all in white, and then it bleeds and bleeds up into the red, and then darkens, and then flows down to that nice wide foot, and it looks to be very very well potted. And then this, um, if you like animal decorations on, on Chinese porcelains of the first half of the 19th century, again, this is a nifty thing. And it has the uh, Jin Teng Fa Ji mark on the bottom. If you have Davison, go look it up. It'll tell you what it means. And uh, here's the top of it, though. Look at this. It, it, it's sort of a peaceable kingdom thing um, with, 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 with hawks monkeys spotted deer some sort of beast over here and then a, a ram and then a, and then a, a bird of paradise in the top lots of flowers uh, I think this is absolutely terrific. If you're looking for a really interesting terrain to serve when you have guests, this is it. And the estimate is very reasonable. And there's the, the bottom of it, uh, clearly a 19th century foot. And uh, let's see here. Uh, how big is this thing? It's eight, seven, eight inches in diameter. came out of a house in Connecticut. It has an eight to $1,200 estimate with a $400 opening bid. All of it very, very reasonable. But it's a very unusual uh, uh, terrain. And you can see here on the bottom, on the bottom half, the animals are all depicted in, in, a, in, the, in, the, in the round on a landscape setting. And I don't see any damage to it. So it's, again, one of these interesting things. This is the, what struck me about the sale. It's full of unusual things. And then this, a really big Kangxi Femi Ver Fu Lion, um, uh, mother Fu Lion with her cub. And what's unusual about it, one is the size of this thing. This is very big. Most of these 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 Fu Lions that you see, even even Kangxi ones or, or later Qing ones, they tend to be sort of in the 7 to 13 inch area, that, that range, 10, 11, 12 inches in height. This thing is 17 inches tall. This is about as big as they made them. I mean, I've seen them bigger, but not often. This is a, a very, very large one. And what's also unusual about it is the cub is standing on his hind legs, um, up, reaching up to his mom. All right. And normally he's sort of curled and she has his paw resting on top of him. And the facial expression of the Fu Lion, I think, is just great. It's very contemplative and he's got his tongue sticking out to the baby. Uh, it's just a very nice looking piece of porcelain. Truly, truly, truly is. There's the bottom of it. They got a little felt on there. It's got a mark on it. Um, uh, nice looking thing. Does have a, a, a crack in the base though, but it's probably very stable at this point. Um, but this is a great thing. And it, 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 they have the name. It's, it's sold in uh, Christie's in 1994, and it was one of two. So maybe they lost one along the way. I don't know. It's estimated at six to eight thousand, three thousand dollar opening bid. It should it should have bids on it already. Actually, for three thousand dollars, that's a very very nice nice piece of Femi Ver on biscuit. Beautiful example. And then this, um, uh, you know, the last week we had that amazing May Ping base that had underglazed red and underglazed blue uh, that brought an absolute fortune. And I was looking at this thing, and here you have another one meticulously done in underglazed blue, underglazed red with just hints of blue, not a lot of blue on it. There's a, there's a, a Ming mark on the bottom as there often is, but it's a Kangxi bowl. And this is a very nice bowl with different different types of fish swimming around it. Unusual, unusual, unusual pattern. Unusual thing to see. Uh, estimated, very, very low estimate. I have no idea why the estimate is so low on this. It's seven and a half inches in diameter, and a thousand to fifteen hundred. This should bring three to five thousand anyway. Uh, it's a fantastic looking piece of porcelain. All right. And then over here, you have a lot. If you want five Chinese porcelain ewers and a teapot, there you go. Uh, there's a pair. And then you have one here that's underglazed blue and underglazed red. That may drive the light. That may drive the lot result quite a bit. Um, and these Middle Eastern form ewers uh, based on early Islamic ewers that were brought into China. They, they made somewhat similar examples during the early Ming Dynasty. They also made them in the Kangxi period. Here's a pair of them. You don't see pairs of these very often. If they're both intact, they're a major, they're a major uh, bit of good luck because you just don't see pairs of them that often. But this, this one here with the square lid and the underglazed blue and underglazed red uh, is a very, also a very, very unusual teapot. There's the bottoms of them, um, and the estimate is extremely reasonable: a fifteen hundred to a thousand, two thousand dollars for the two of them. Um, let me see here. 750 opening bid, and the uh, tallest is six and three quarter inches tall. So these are fairly small. They're teapot size, but very nicely done. 
and uh, with a very modest uh, estimate, you, I, I, you think that the, the pair of them should be worth these. This pair here should be worth fifteen hundred to two thousand by themselves, and then this pot should be worth another thousand to fifteen hundred minimum, another three hundred, four hundred for that, and another three or four hundred for that. So, do the math, add it up. You're up around four thousand dollars for the lot. But if if they go in at the estimate, if they come out at the estimate, boy, if you're the lucky buyer, you got a good price on them. And it's the kind of lot if you're a dealer, you can break it up and make money with it if you want to. And uh, then the horse pattern. We've seen this before. This is always a popular one, always a favorite. Uh, as many of you know, I love horses and animals depicted on porcelains, and I think these are just terrific. They look like two pals going out for a walk. And uh, underneath this beautifully painted uh, of a female rose willow tree in a, in a flowering landscape spring setting, just absolutely, or a summer setting, absolutely beautiful. White enamels on the flower tips up here. And overall, it looks to be in quite good shape. I see a tiny, tiny, tiny nick in that corner but the enameling all looks very much intact and, and good uh, it's about eight inches in diameter uh, these always do well these always bring a pretty good price it's estimated at eight to 1200 should get there uh, but a very nice example and in good condition young chen period so there you are and then another set of quillen trays these are 18th century um, with, with figures riding them uh, with shaped rims and so forth uh, very very unusual um, there's the backs of them. Here's the front of them. Uh, I think there's a little bit of wear on the face, but the form, shape, and style of these is very, very unusual. You don't see these again. These are the kind of things you don't see every day. And I like the, uh, the face on the quill, and he's sort of smiling and laughing as they go along. Um, and these were pretty good size. These weren't tiny. They were 11 inches in diameter with a three to $5,000 estimate and a $1,500 opening, opening bid. And then over here to this, um, uh, they said playing chess. They're actually playing Go because they, uh, no, no, these are these are the people. Okay, this is people playing Go and a fisherman plate. This is this is one lot of five Kangxi plates. There's another one that they called chess, and they they weren't playing chess in China in the Kangxi period. <laughs> but any rate, uh, it's a quibble. Um, there's the back of it um, with assorted marks and so forth. Uh, nice looking dishes. Uh, da, 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 let's see here, um, 2,500 to 3,500, 2,000 dollar opening bid, and then over to this, the um, let me just double check, I make sure I didn't miss anybody. Okay, this the square Kangxi period Femi Ver, uh, they call them gin bottles, and they used to export these, and they had boxes that would hold six of them and that sort of thing. And uh, this is a really nice one. Often these bottles are absolutely beaten to a pulp or along the edges. This one has some fretting on the edge, like down here at the bottom. But if you've been collecting for any length of time, you know that normally when you see these, the fretting goes all the way up every seam because these are slab constructed and, and they tend to tend to pop a little bit um, and this one is a, a nice example and there's the top of it it's still all there and again tiny bit of fritting but nowhere near what you typically see on these there's the top of it it looks fine nice bottom um, estimated at 1500 to 2 750 opening bid again reasonable as all get out and this is the chess players and the reason i was joking about it was was that the, the, they, they call these chess players on these the chess players plates the kangxi period all the time but that's a western name really because the chinese did, weren't even introduced uh to the game of chess until the 19th century and the uh, uh go was the most popular and it's clearly what they're paying is go because there's the board and those are the uh, the go counters the little boxes that you kept the pieces in those boxes bring a fortune today if they're from the, from an early period and uh, it's a nice looking set though i have to say I, I, I ben must have been pretty pleased when he saw these set of six of these all, all in identical scenes very nice five to seven thousand dollars also very rare um and uh, uh a starting price of 2600 but if you're a Kangxi buyer, you know what these are, and you're going to like them. And they measure eight and a half inches in uh, diameter each. And uh, who did they say they came from? Francis Black, New York City, by repute. All right. Whoever he was. I don't know him. So, somebody's going to put in the comments, you don't know who Francis Black was. No, I don't know who he was. But anyway, I'm sure he was somebody famous at some point. And then this. This caught my eye. I thought this was very nice. This is a 10-inch long soapstone of a foo lion. Um looks like an old one um 18th century at least the facial expression is really really good the surface looks all very good this nice low relief of ling bai and wave patterns down at the bottom of the saddle 
and so forth. And this is a big hunk of soapstone, 10 inch block of soapstone formed into a foo line. You got to love that. And uh, let's see, it is estimated at 2,500 to 3,500 with a $1,300 opening bid. But this is a big piece of soapstone. This thing is like this. It's a beast. And it was obviously done by a very good carver. Um, it isn't the typical, you know, 19th century soapstone you've seen that they sold, see that they sold to the tourists in the early 20th century, you know, in, during the Republic period. This is the fine early stuff. And that, that's the kind of thing you want to chase. And then this is Jeanne de Marc, uh, probably 18th century uh, bowl. Um, it has it has a Ming dragon on it though, which is sort of interesting. So whoever did it uh, knew how to draw Ming dragons. This isn't a Qing dragon, and they have these sort of goofy faces on them. And uh, I think there's a pretty good bowl. Uh, I can't see anything wrong with it. The shape is good. It's like an alms bowl. Um, there it is. The dragon's in a different position here. He's sort of um, uh, swimming, sort of like he's almost going upside down. And uh, this, this, and there he is again. And there's the bottom of it with the Shindy mark. Uh, but the foot, and it also has Anwei decoration in the body. I should mention that, which makes it very interesting. Um, uh, it is incised decoration under the glaze. Uh, and what happens is they just carve the porcelain. They don't add any color to it if you don't know what Anwei is. And then when they glaze it, because there's incised decoration, the gla those incised areas will hold more glaze and, and make the make the uh, carving stand out through the bowl when you look at it under the right light. And that's what you see here. You see a lot of Anway decoration in transitional period pieces, especially the brush pots and the vases. Um, any rate, and uh, there it is. And that's the interior of the bowl. It's not a plate. That's the interior of the same bowl here. Uh, really interesting. I think that's a good piece. Uh, three to five thousand at fifteen hundred dollar estimate. Uh, go to the preview. Check this out. If this is an eighteenth century bowl. It's a bargain for that price. It's absolutely great buy. And then this. Another one is we, there were two of the we, we looked. We were looking at the, uh, the the Getty sale the other day, and they had these Ming, Ming what they call the wing swept um, uh, pots from the fifteenth century. And uh, as luck would have it, they have one in this sale. This is a nice one. And as you recall, the other ones over in that sale are estimated. At eight to twelve and fifteen to twenty thousand. This one is estimated at ten to fifteen thousand with a five thousand dollar opening bid. It's just a hair under thirteen inches. This is a pretty good size one. Twelve and seven eighths inches. Uh, nicely done, top to bottom. Nice white, snow white porcelain. Um, let's see. And there's the bottom of it. That looks absolutely fine for Ming, doesn't it? And um, let's see here. $5,000. It's already got a bid. I'm not surprised. Uh, this will do pretty well, I think. That's a very handsome looking piece of porcelain. And uh, then this, another one of these uh, bottles, of square bottles. Uh, this is a Ming example um, with uh, foo lions on it running down the front in all in blue and white. Good looking bottle. And I don't see any fritz on the edge of this one at all. Um, Looks absolutely great. Uh, the estimate on it is two to three thousand, which is right in the ballpark. Thousand dollar opening bid. That's also right in the ballpark. Uh, nice looking bottle. How big is it? Eleven and a half inches in height. And the last lot we're going to look at is this painting. This just struck me as great. There's two paintings sort of in this style. There's another one of a scholar's rock. And uh, I, they, they probably came from the same consigner. I don't know. Um, they think it's after the after after the uh, Mi Hawan, who was a, a very active painting in the late uh, uh, Chunzhen period, the early Kangxi period. He died in the early Kangxi period, but he was he was active between 1661 and 1692, which, as you know, was a very classic. You know, was a big period of transition in China. Uh, the, the the end the end of the, the the end of the Ming. We got into the transitional, and then you know Chunzhen, and then eventually into the Kangxi period. So this was right at that time. And uh, this is a, a very lovely, if you like Chinese paintings, classical paintings, rocks, so forth, um, this has a very low estimate on it. I think it's an absolutely beautiful painting. It is signed. Um, they didn't say who the signature was, but there is a signature on it. You may ask them. And it may be Maha Wen's, um, uh, uh, Han Wen's uh, signature. I'm not sure. Um, but I guess I didn't go look it up, but, um, this is a very nice painting. It's got an opening bid of only $400 and this is a big picture. It is 12 by 23. It's nice size. It's not a little tiny, you know, six by eight or, you know, five by 10 pictures. This is a good size picture framed. It would end up being, you know, 15 by 28. It would be a nice big picture to hang and the high estimate on only $1,200. It's estimated at eight to 1200. 
So uh, uh, that's something worth going after. Aesthetically, it's a very, very handsome picture. And they said it was acquired, it was bought in China between 1980 and 1984. And that was right after China opened to the West. And, and, and those of you who were around back then, uh, I remember people were going there because they didn't have terrific controls on people coming out. And they were even at that time, in, the, in 85 or 86, it was actually a thing the Chinese government did where they were allowing dealers to come into China to go to the, some of these government-run auctions. And those of you who were around then remember this. And everybody got an invitation. And, and, and they had a special permit at that time that you could take out of the country anything else you bought while you were there if you managed to find something else. They sort of got these, uh, they, it was a very brief period where they seemed to be handing out um, uh, a, a, like blank export uh, permits. I, I got offered it. I, I couldn't go at the time. I had small children and a lot going on, but but uh, I, I I really wished I could have gone, but I couldn't back then. Uh, and 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 the auction they had an auction in some government warehouses. I remember. Anyway, that's that's it. It's a good. There's other stuff in the sale too. There's a whole bunch of stuff in this auction. Um, so go through and do check it out. There's some Vietnamese stuff, some Vietnamese stuff. There's this very nice pale celadon um, from the 11th to the 14th century. That's Vietnamese. There's some nice bronzes. There's paintings, woodblock prints, Japanese stuff. If we talked about the Kutani vases and Satsuma. Uh, nice looking sale. There aren't any other any other one of the major auction houses will have anything going on that day. So um, it would be a good sale to focus in on. You have plenty of time. And um, if you look, if you like any of those lots, look into them further and uh, hop over to the Freeman site. All right. All right. That's it for Sundays. Um, no, I, I may do one again. This is this is more very relaxing. Uh, have a great rest of your week. We'll be back uh, this week with more videos. And uh, thanks for watching and subscribing and all that good stuff. All right. Bye-bye.